Welcome back to another Armstore video. I'm Thomas Lee and this is part one of my Kite DLG build log. The Kite is made by Soaring Models in Ukraine and available through Armstore USA in North America. So first, let's take a look at what comes in the kit. There's the two wing panels. This is the horizontal stabilizer and the fin. This is the fuselage with a nose cone. Now, when you first get the model, it might be hard to get the nose cone off. It does loosen a little bit after a while though. This slot at the top is for the ballast to go into the fuse. And you can see that the ballast tube is already installed. Behind that are the two openings for the wing control horns. And in the front, this is a full servo tray for you to mount your servos, batteries, and receivers. All right, so let's take a look at everything else that's included in the kit. Now let's take a look at the tools I'm using for this build. Of course, some of these tools are not mandatory for the build, but it does make things easier. If you're interested in some of these tools, check out the tool guide linked in the description box below. I started my build by roughing up the control horns. Then I sprayed it with rubbing alcohol and wiped everything clean. I put a piece of masking tape on the rudder. Then I used a ruler to find the center of the span. Next, I marked a line 90 degrees to the hinge. This is where the rudder horn is going to go. Obviously, I messed up, so I need to draw that line again. Okay, that's better now. I then put the rudder horn up to the line so I can mark how long the cut will need to be. The front of the horn is right up against the hinge line. Measure twice, cut once. Using a fresh blade, I cut the top skin. Be careful, don't go too deep, otherwise you might cut through the foam and the bottom skin as well. I then take off the masking tape to expose the carbon. Using a small fine file, I widen the slot for the control horn. And when that's done, let's do a test fit. If it's too tight, file it a bit more, but this one was perfect. I remove the control horn, spray it with rubbing alcohol, and wipe it clean. This ensures a good bond. I place it back onto the rudder and spend some time to make sure that it's perfectly aligned. Using our glue applicator tips, I precisely apply thin CA along the joint. Let the CA soak into the joint and add some more until there is a small fillet. When that is done, I hit it with kicker. Now let's repeat the same thing for the elevator.
Now that the control horns for both tails are installed, let's do the springs. The springs come pre-bent from the factory, and even though there's three, you only need two for the build. Starting with the elevator, I poke a hole right beside the control horn so that the force of the spring transfers directly to the horn. I carefully insert one of the legs into the elevator, poking through the foam, but making sure it doesn't poke through the skin. Next, using the wire as a guide, I poke another hole for the other leg of the spring. Just like before, carefully insert the leg through the foam, making sure it doesn't poke through the skin itself. I spent a little time to double check and make sure that the skin is still intact and I didn't break through anything. Carefully remove the spring. I dip the two legs into white Gorilla Glue. As this glue cures, it expands and fills any potential voids so the force from the spring is better distributed and the legs won't poke through the skin over time. Next, carefully insert the spring back into the tail. And make sure that the spring is fully seated against the hinge. Finally, I clean up the excess glue with a Q-tip. The elevator is all done. Now we just have to repeat the process with the rudder. The tails are done, set them aside for the glue to cure. Next, let's tackle the wing control horn installation. We need to remove some foam from the aileron, so I use the control horn to mark how much foam to remove. I start to remove some foam with a knife, careful not to poke through the wing skin by accident. After removing some foam, test fit the control horn to see if we need to keep removing more foam. Repeat this a few times until the control horn fits nicely into the slot. Now remember, take your time and don't remove too much foam each time, otherwise you'll have a void to fill later. Okay, I think that's good. We also need to cut some of the carbon facing from the flaperon, so I use the control horn to mark the spot and cut it out with a Dremel. I then test fit it again to make sure everything is fitting properly. Perfect, I think everything looks good now. This cutout for the control horn is already cut at the factory, but the foam inside still needs to be removed. So I do that with a Dremel and clean everything back up. It turns out there's one more 5mm cut on the front facing so that the control horn can tuck in there when the flaperon is deflected upwards. Okay, we're good now. Everything fits properly and movement is good both up and down. Alright. So the left wing panel is all done now. 
Let's repeat on the right wing panel and get that ready for the control horns to be glued in as well. Based on the experience from the first side, I had changed up the order of operation on the second panel to make things go smoother. Now that both sides are prepped, I clean everything to prepare for gluing the control horns into the flaperons. Take one of the access rods and put it through the hole on a control horn closer to the bend. Slip the horn back into the flaperon and align it so the rod goes into the groove in the center. After installation, the rod helps take a lot of the forces usually put on the hinge to increase hinge durability and prevent flutter. I repeat it on the other side to make sure they're both aligned properly before we start to glue things in. Remove the control horns. I'm going to roughen them up with a ball end burbit on the Dremel for better bonding. Make sure all surfaces that will be glued are properly roughened so that the bond is going to be as strong as possible. As usual, spray it with rubbing alcohol and get everything cleaned up properly. Next, we start mixing some 15 minute epoxy. You can use 30 minute epoxy as well, that will probably give you a bit more working time. Remember to mix the epoxy very thoroughly. Once the epoxy is thoroughly mixed, we're going to add some micro balloons to make it thicker and to lighten the mixture. <laughs> I'm horrible, don't be messy like me. Stir in and combine the micro balloons into the epoxy mixture. Make sure it's done thoroughly and there's no clumps of dry micro balloons. Man, what an eyesore. Let's clean up some of that spill. I give it a couple more whirls and we're ready to start gluing. Grab an access rod and insert it back into the control horn. Get some masking tape and mask off the tab so any potential excess glue won't stick to places you don't want it. Scoop some of the epoxy mixture into the slot and even though you don't need it to completely fill it, make sure there's a good amount in there and that it's all the way into the end of the slot. Add some epoxy to the control horn as well. You're going to want to make sure all the contact surfaces have a film of epoxy. Once that's done, quickly insert the horn back into the slot. Ensure the rod is lined up inside the groove and hit it with a few drops of thin CA. The CA is the first step in gluing the rod to the wing. Hold the rod down and move the flap on slightly to make sure the rod is completely aligned as the glue cures. After the CA cures, I'm going to use a Q-tip to go into the hinge and wipe off any of the excess epoxy that might still be in there. And there's a bit of a void, so I'm going to fill that up with a bit more epoxy. I cut a piece of Kapton tape and tape it against the epoxy so it doesn't move as it cures. The great thing with Kapton is, it's not going to leave any residue. Make sure the outboard surface of the horn is 11.8mm from the root. Set it aside to cure and we'll repeat the process on the other wing half.
After the epoxy cures, you can now remove the tape. Take the carbon fabric and cut out four 1cm strips. I found it easier by not using a ruler. After the carbon strips are cut, I rough up the wing where the carbon will be glued for better bonding. Yep, you guessed it. Spray with alcohol and wipe everything clean. Carefully double up two pieces of carbon. Lay it over the rod and carefully hold it in place with your finger. Then apply thin CA with the needle while pushing it up against the edge that's formed between the wing surface and the rod. This makes sure that there's no air bubbles and voids between the carbon fabric, rod and wing surface. Ensure that the entire piece of carbon is wetted out and there's no dry spots. Cover the area with a piece of plastic film and apply pressure with your finger while the CA cures. That's it for now, let's repeat the process on the other wing first. As the CA finishes curing, I switch back to the first panel to begin the final step. First, cut off the excess carbon. I found it easier to do with a pair of scissors. Then, file the end flush against the wing root. Lastly, I lightly smooth out the surface. And when that's done, spray with rubbing alcohol and wipe everything clean. Move the flapper on to make sure it's smooth and aligned, admire your handiwork, and repeat on the other panel. You probably noticed a small smudge of epoxy that got on the surface of the flapper on and cured. I'll show you why it's important to grind and clean the surfaces before gluing. Because if you don't, you can pop the epoxy right off the part. Although, in this case, that's a good thing. Next, let's install the T-blade into the wing. I'm right-handed, so it'll go in the left wing panel. Cut a strip of masking tape and mask the wing tip. Measure 10mm from the hinge line. That's the rear of the throwing blade position. Then, mark where the tang of the throwing blade will be installed. Measure 5mm from the wingtip. And draw a line perpendicular to the hinge. Now carefully cut the wingtip. This is where the T-blade is going to be inserted and installed into your wing. Cut a thin strip of masking tape. We'll wrap this around a long bit to know how deep to dig for the tang. Turn the bit as you insert it into the wing tip so you excavate the foam and not compress it. Make sure you follow the outline of the tang so you don't take out too much foam and create voids. In this step, we're only drilling to outline the two sides of the tang position. 
We're finished one side, so let's do the other. Once you've outlined the two sides of the tank position, you can freely start removing the foam in the middle. Test fit the blade to make sure it's fitting properly. In this case, it's a little tight, so we're going to have to expand the hole a little bit. Alright, I think we're good. Let's remove the blade and prepare to rough up the tank for better bonding. Using a diamond burr bit, I'm cutting a few notches in the tank for the epoxy to have a better grip. After I cut the notches, I rough up the surface of the tang as well. Flip it over and rough up the other side. Spray it with rubbing alcohol and give it a good wipe. I then take off the masking tape and start preparing for the epoxy mixture. As usual when mixing epoxy, make sure you spend some time in fully mixing it together very very thoroughly. This time instead of mixing micro balloons to lighten and thicken the mixture, I'm using aerosol. Aerosol doesn't lighten it, but I felt the fitment was very tight, so it likely won't use much epoxy to begin with. So I'm using aerosil for some added strength instead. Aerosil is harder to combine into epoxy, so take your time to make sure it's combined well. On the bottom of the wing, I poke a small hole near the end of the foam void. I apply a generous coat of epoxy mixture onto the blade tang. Then I scoop the mixture into the opening, and the little hole we poked earlier, that allows air to escape as the epoxy mixture flows in. When I'm happy with that, I slide the tang into the wingtip. And if you see some epoxy coming out of the small hole, that's good. That means that there's no air bubbles trapped inside. Now all we need to do is clean off any excess epoxy that came out. To give it a deep clean and prevent any smudges of epoxy on the surface, wet the q-tips and paper towel with rubbing alcohol first, and use two or three paper towels to avoid contamination. I cut two strips of Kapton tape and tape over the joints. That way, the T-blade won't move and any epoxy that might make its way out of the joint will have a nice finished surface from the capped on tape. That's it for part 1. Hit subscribe so you don't miss part 2. See you in the next video.